The interpreter for Shohei Otani was sacked due to accusations of a massive theft. The Los Angeles Dodgers have fired the longtime interpreter and friend of superstar Shohei Otani following allegations of a massive theft. Ippiai Mizuhara, who has been alongside Japanese baseball sensation Otani since his 2018 MLB debut, is accused of using funds from the player's bank account to pay off gambling debts. Otani's lawyers told the Los Angeles Times that Mr. Mizuhara placed bets with an allegedly illegal bookmaker, who is reportedly under federal investigation. ESPN reported at least $4.5 million had been transferred from Otani's account to a Southern California gambling operation. Mr. Mizuhara, who gave his account in an interview with the U.S. Sport Network on Tuesday night, lost his job after reporters started asking questions about the wire transfers. Obviously, this is all my fault, everything I've done, he told ESPN. I'm ready to face all the consequences. He said his bets were on international soccer, the NBA, the NFL and college football, but never baseball. Initially, he said Otani had agreed to cover his gambling debts. A day later, he said the player had no knowledge of the gambling debts and had not transferred any money to bookmakers, ESPN reported. A spokesman for Otani said his lawyers would issue a statement. In the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that Shoei has been the victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to the authorities, law firm Burke Brettler LLP said in a statement to the Los Angeles Times. When asked by ESPN after the statement was issued if he had been accused of theft, Mr. Mizuhara said he was told he could not comment. The Dodgers confirmed to Reuters and the Associated Press in a statement that Mr. Mizuhara had been fired. They said they were aware of media reports and are gathering information. Sports betting is legal in up to 40 U.S. states, but is still outlawed in California. MLB rules prohibit players and team employees from gambling, even legally, on baseball and also ban betting on other sports with illegal or offshore bookmakers. Otani signed a record-breaking $700 million deal with the LA Dodgers in December. The 29-year-old pitcher and designated hitter agreed the historic 10-year contract with the California team after six seasons with the Los Angeles Angels. Despite his global stardom, the player has remained largely media-shy. Elon Musk's Neuralink displays a patient using a brain chip playing chess. The first patient to receive a brain chip from Elon Musk's company Neuralink has appeared to play online chess. Neuralink released a nine-minute video in which the patient, who is paralyzed below his shoulders, appears to move a cursor across a laptop screen with nothing but his thoughts. The video shows him playing chess and turning off the laptop's music. The patient, who had not been previously identified, said in the live stream video that his name is Nolan Arbaugh, 29, who was paralyzed below the shoulder after a diving accident. Mr. Arbaugh received an implant from the company in January and could control a computer mouse using his thoughts, Musk said last month. Musk previously said the aim of the brain chip is to eventually allow users with disabilities, like the late Stephen Hawking, to communicate faster than an auctioneer. He has also claimed it would be able to potentially treat obesity, autism, depression and schizophrenia. The surgery was super easy. I literally was released from the hospital a day later. I have no cognitive impairments. Basically given up playing the game Civilization 6, but you all guy Neuralink gave me the ability to do that again and I played for 8 hours that day. I don't want people to think that this is the end of the journey, there's still a lot of work to be done, but it has already changed my life," Mr. Arbaugh said in the video streamed on Musk's social media platform X, referring to the implant procedure. But Mr. Arbaugh said the new technology is not perfect, and they have run into some issues. In the Neuralink video, Mr. Arbaugh talks about the process he underwent to train on the device after doctors implanted it in January. He said that he would think about moving his hand and that, eventually, moving the computer cursor became second nature. It just became intuitive to me to start imagining the cursor moving. It was like using the force on the cursor, and I could get it to move wherever I wanted, he said, using a Star Wars reference. Every day it seems like we're learning new stuff, he said. <laughs> Google
Goon Squad officers jailed for a despicable torture of two black men. Two former Mississippi Sheriff's deputies who were members of a group calling itself the Goon Squad have been handed lengthy prison sentences for their part in torturing two black men. Hunter Elward, 31, was jailed for 20 years, and Jeffrey Middleton, 46, was sentenced to 17 and a half years on Tuesday during back-to-back -back proceedings at a federal court in Jackson, Mississippi, according to the U.S. Justice Department. They were two of six officers who burst into a house in Braxton, Mississippi, without a search warrant and assaulted Michael Corey Jenkins and Eddie Terrell Parker with stun guns, a sex toy and other objects. It followed a complaint to the sheriff's office from a white neighbor that two black men were staying with a white woman at the address and that they had seen a suspicious behavior. The victims were held captive and handcuffed during a two-hour ordeal, which ended with Mr. Jenkins being shot in the mouth. He suffered a lacerated tongue and broken jaw. Once inside the house, they handcuffed Mr. Jenkins and his friend Mr. Parker and poured milk, alcohol and chocolate syrup over their faces. They then forced them to strip naked and shower together to conceal the mess. They mocked the victims with racial slurs and shocked them with stun guns. One of the sheriff's deputies, Christian Deadman, assaulted them with a sex toy. After Elward shot Mr. Jenkins in the mouth in a mock execution that went wrong when he pulled the trigger, the officers devised a cover-up. This included destroying surveillance video, an attempt to burn the victim's clothes, and planting drugs and a gun. False charges stood against the two victims for months. The officers warned them to stay out of Rankin County and go back to Jackson or either side of the Pearl River, court documents stated, referencing an area with higher concentrations of black residents. The former officers, all of them white, referred to themselves as the Goon Squad because of their willingness to use excessive force, according to papers filed in the case. In a statement on Tuesday, Attorney General Merrick Garland condemned that heinous attack on citizens they had sworn an oath to protect. Before sentencing Elward and Middleton, U.S. District Judge Tom Lee called their actions egregious and despicable. Elward and Middleton pleaded guilty with the other four former law enforcement officers last summer to multiple felony offenses, including civil rights conspiracy, deprivation of rights under color of law, conspiracy to obstruct justice and obstruction of justice. Daniel Opdyke, 28, and Deadman, 29, are set to appear separately before Judge Lee on Wednesday for sentencing. Brett McAlpin, 53, and a former Richland police officer, Joshua Hartfield, 32, are due to be sentenced on Thursday. The guilty pleas entered in a federal court in August were part of a larger agreement which included guilty pleas to state charges. A date has not yet been set for the sentencing in the state case. The defendants are to serve their federal and state sentences concurrently. <laughs> Hermes sued over claims it refused to sell shoppers Birkin bags. Hermes has been sued over claims it unlawfully allows only customers with a sufficient purchase history, with the company to buy its famous Birkin bags. Two residents in California allege Hermes is violating antitrust laws by tying the sale of one item to the purchase of another, according to the proposed federal class action lawsuit filed on Tuesday in San Francisco. The company's sales associates are driving the scheme by pushing customers to buy shoes, scarves, jewelry and other items to gain an opportunity to buy a Birkin, the lawsuit said. Consumers cannot purchase a Birkin online from Hermes and the leather bags which are handcrafted and can cost thousands of dollars each, are not displayed for sale in the company's retail stores, according to the lawsuit. Typically, only those consumers who are deemed worthy of purchasing a Birkin handbag will be shown a Birkin handbag in a private room. Hermes sales associates do not earn commissions on Birkin bag sales and are instructed to use the handbags as a way to coerce consumers to purchase ancillary products, the lawsuit claimed. The lawsuit calls the Birkin handbags an icon of fashion. They are named after the singer and actress Jane Birkin, who died in July aged 76. In 1981, Birkin was reportedly sat next to Hermes chief executive Jean-Louis Dumas on a flight from Paris to London, according to L'Officiel magazine. Following a conversation between the two about how difficult it was to find a bag that could fulfill Birkin's needs as a mother of two, the Birkin bag was born. 
Mr. Dumas designed the bag on the spot and named it after Birkin when it came into production in 1984, according to reports. The handbag went on to become a status symbol, with some fetching well over $10,000. The lawsuit said it was seeking class action status for thousands of U.S. consumers who bought Hermes goods or were asked to buy them in order to purchase a Birkin. Hermes operates about 43 stores in the United States, including eight in California. The plaintiffs are seeking unspecified monetary damages and a court order barring Hermes allegedly anti-competitive practices. The world's first kidney transplant from a pig into a real human. Surgeons have successfully transplanted a genetically modified pig kidney into a living patient, the first procedure of its kind, a U.S. hospital has announced. Richard Slayman of Massachusetts received the organ earlier this month after undergoing a four-hour surgery at the Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH, in Boston. Mr. Slayman is recovering well and is expected to be discharged soon, doctors said on Thursday. The 62-year-old suffers from end-stage renal failure, a chronic disease where the kidneys can no longer function on their own. The surgery has spurred hopes that transplants from animals to humans, xenotransplantation, could address the global shortage of donor organs. Previously, pig kidneys have only been temporarily transplanted into brain-dead recipients. Jim Parsons, who was kept on a ventilator during a study, received two pig kidneys that were not immediately rejected in 2022. And researchers found a pig kidney to be working a month after it was transplanted into a brain-dead cancer patient last August. MGH said Mr. Slayman's procedure marked a major milestone in the quest to provide more readily available organs to patients. Doctors hailed him as a real hero, adding the surgery would not have been possible without his courage and willingness to embark on a journey into uncharted medical territory. In a statement, Mr. Slayman thanked MGH saying the procedure was not only as a way to help me, but a way to provide hope for the thousands of people who need a transplant to survive. Researchers have been trying since the early 2000s to genetically modify pigs in a way that reduces the chance of the transplant being rejected by the human immune system. According to the United Network for Organ Sharing UNOS, more than 100,000 people in the US are waiting for an organ transplant, and 17 people die each day from this, with a kidney the most common organ needed for transplant. Meanwhile, some 5,000 patients are on the kidney transplant waiting list in the UK exceeding the 3,600 transplants that are carried out each year, according to Charity Kidney Research. The pig kidney was provided by eGenesis of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Apple is sued by the U.S. Justice Department for having an illegal monopoly on smartphones. The U.S. Department of Justice is suing Apple, accusing the tech giant of maintaining an illegal monopoly on smartphones. The 88-page lawsuit alleges the California-based company is making its products worse for consumers so it can block out competitors. Attorney General Merrick Garland described the firm's behavior as exclusionary, anti-competitive conduct that hurts both consumers and developers. Mr. Garland said, monopolies like Apple's threaten the free and fair markets upon which our economy is based. They stifle innovation, they hurt producers and workers, and they increase costs for consumers. If left unchallenged, Apple will only continue to strengthen its smartphone monopoly. According to the Justice Department, Apple's net income exceeds the individual GDP of more than 100 countries, and it attributes a large part of that to the success of the iPhone. Apple's share of the U.S. smartphone market is more than 65 percent. Fifteen U.S. states and the District of Columbia have joined the Justice Department in the first major antitrust effort against the iPhone maker by the Biden administration. The lawsuit cites five examples of Apple suppressing technologies that would have increased competition, so-called super apps, cloud stream game apps, messaging apps, smartwatches and digital wallets. Speaking about the digital wallet, Mr. Garland said Apple encourages banks to participate but at the same time, exerts its monopoly power to block them from developing similar products for iPhone users. Apple has blocked third-party developers from creating digital wallets on the iPhone that use tap to pay instead forcing users to share personal information with Apple instead of just their bank, he said. 
When an iPhone user puts a credit or debit card into Apple Wallet, Apple inserts itself in a process that could otherwise occur directly between the user and card issuer. This introduces an additional potential point of failure for the privacy and security of Apple users. And that is just one way in which Apple is willing to make the iPhone less secure and less private in order to maintain its monopoly power, he added. Talking about the messaging app, Mr. Garland said that, if an iPhone user messages a non-iPhone user through Apple Messages, the text is only a green bubble, it is not encrypted, videos are pixelated, and users cannot edit messages or see typing indicators. As a result, iPhone users perceive rival smartphones as being lower quality because the experience of messaging friends and family who do not own iPhones is worse, even though Apple is the one responsible for breaking cross-platform messaging. And it does so intentionally, Mr. Garland said. Apple said the lawsuit is a wrong on the facts and the law, and that it will vigorously defend against it. This lawsuit threatens who we are and the principles that set Apple products apart in fiercely competitive markets. If successful, it would hinder our ability to create the kind of technology people expect from Apple, where hardware software and services intersect. Apple shares were down 3.5% in US morning trading. Apple is also in the firing line in Europe where, along with Meta and Alphabet's Google, it is expected to face the scrutiny of the European Commission. The Commission is likely to announce investigations in the coming days into whether the companies have breached Europe's Digital Markets Act, Reuters reported.